Well, very good. So, to understand the rectification process in our water comparison circuit, we have to add one more element. And this is, many of you surely know, a check valve. Or a non-return valve. Surely many who study through these videos know what a non-return valve is. For those who don't know her, I'm going to draw her and try to explain her as best as possible. So, imagine we have a component and a water pipe that has an internal shape more or less like this. What's going on here? If we inject water from this side, the water will be able to pass because it has places through which to do so. However, if we inject water from the other side, it will not be able to pass because the plug or internal core will be placed here and will prevent the passage of water. So, a check valve allows the passage of water in a direction and prevents passage in the opposite direction. This represents a component that we have in electricity and produces the same effect. And it is the diode. So that you can see what a diode is like. I am going to show you. It is a component. That we clearly see a gray strip on one side and the other side is broader and black with a number that indicates the different characteristics of the diode. But, well, there is a difference on one side and on the other. So, these diodes with the electrons are going to be exactly that. Here we could see what they look like. What I'm going to do now is draw them here so we can see them in comparison to our check valve. This would be a diode with the side that has the stripe thinner allowing the passage of electrons and the other side does not allow the passage of electrons. Its symbol is represented in this way to be able to understand it, also taking it to the symbols. A diode produces this effect. It allows electrons to pass on one side and does not allow them to pass on the other side. This is the necessary element to convert alternating current into direct current, producing the rectification, too, that we are looking for and needing in all. Electronic board. Diodes have different characteristics, such as the voltage they support, which is the voltage of the electrons. Another characteristic is the amperage that they support, the amount of electrons that can pass before they break, and the opening and closing speed of this check valve, because it has a speed limit. We're going to talk about that throughout the training, but first we're going to understand how a diode works. If you want to investigate a little more about how these components work internally, of course they don't have a moving component like a check valve, they are actually components that are altered, I'll leave it here for you to look for later. It is not a practical topic that you will need, that is why it is not explained here, but equally, for those who like to investigate, they can search the internet or Wikipedia, which is a good and very reliable page within everything. You can search about the contamination. Of silicon. And germanium. You can search the internet to find out how diodes work internally at the atomic level. Well, that's up to you. I leave them as homework if you wish. I am going to show you and practice how these diodes work. We will always have these components located in this position. One more detail to take into account is that on this side we have the cathode and on this side we have the anode so that you know what each side of the diode is called. If we inject electrons through the cathode, the electrons pass. If we inject electrons through the anode, the electrons do not pass. That is what we are going to do to test its correct functioning. I am going to run this. 
we are going to turn on the lights and do the measurement. If we place our multimeter in the diode position, you will find here the symbol of a diode. This is the position that will allow us to make that measurement. Notice that these multimeters in each of the positions have several functions. For example, this position has four different functions. When we place it, it is the white function. I will explain how this works because it is the one that I am going to recommend, this UniT brand multimeter, which is a very good brand, if we want to go to the remaining functions. Later we will analyze one by one, for now only diode, we have to press the blue key, so we press. There we see that we change to the function of diodes. And pay attention to this detail, the data that will mark us on the screen, will now produce a result in voltage, that is, in volts. The multimeter will measure. The voltage drop produced by the internal function of the diode, and thus we will check its operation and its status. Always before using a multimeter, it is important to make sure that it is in good condition by touching both ends. Okay, what do we do now? We are going to let electrons pass in one direction and in the other. The electrons always come from the negative side, that is, from the common multimeter, and the other side, the red one, is the positive one that will receive the electrons. We are going to polarize it in such a way that the electrons pass through. The voltage drop that we obtain is 0 0.597 or 0 0.6 volts. This voltage drop is correct for one of these two diodes. They produce a voltage drop of 0.6 volts due to their internal composition, that is, their way of working. If we invert these cables, it should show us OL. This tells us that the electrons are not passing back and forth, and that's what we're looking for in a diode. So this diode is in good condition, of course this diode is new, as seen here but in this way its operation is proven. What we just did was to polarize it or injecting electrons in two different ways. It is important that these terms are memorized, names that we are going to write here. What we just did was polarize it. When we injected electrons from the cathode, from the side where they pass, we polarized it indirect. And when we injected electrons from the other side, what we did was polarized it in. Reverse. This component, the diode, will help us convert alternating current into direct current. They will understand it in a very simple way and they will find it on all plates. However, this rectification process is frequently damaged due to direct contact with alternating current, be it 110V, 220V, or 127V, which is constantly fluctuating and power can be cut off and restored. Therefore, these components are often damaged quite a bit. Next, we will explain how this rectification occurs.